Hey there folks, this is Rational Ginger. Today I'm going to be bringing you a video on Halo Wars, the Definitive Edition. This is the PC port of the original Halo Wars. Let me turn down the music just a little bit because I know you're probably going to have a hard time hearing me over it. Actually, let's turn that all the way down. Actually, that doesn't seem to have lowered it as much as I thought it would, so let's try that again. <laughs> There we go. Had to go way down. Sorry about that. Um, Halo Wars was released on the Xbox 360 back in 2009, I believe in February. Um, as part of a promotion for Halo Wars 2, they remastered the first Halo Wars for uh, the Xbox One and for PC. Now originally you could only get this on the Windows 10 store. Which is, if you ever messed with the Windows 10 store, is kind of terrible. But, uh, it was a fairly good uh, console RTS, especially for the time. Um, there's only been a few console RTS games, or even ports of RTS games from PC to console. I believe there was a StarCraft 64 back in the day. Uh, there were a couple of the Command and Conquers that were on console. And, but Halo Wars was pretty good. It managed to sort of streamline its control scheme. It had a decent single player campaign. And, you know, just all around, you know, really good game. I enjoyed it quite a bit back on the 360. And uh, when I saw it come out today, uh, that's Thursday, April 20th, it was only 20 bucks on Steam. Uh, this is the official Steam release. So I said, you know. I, I will definitely buy this game for 20 bucks. I, I enjoyed this game. It had a pretty robust multiplayer scene. All right, so let's uh, let's go into the little stuff first. Let's go to the options. First thing, you've got control. It does have full keyboard, uh, you know, full keyboard mouse support and controller support. Now the question is, can I rebind this? I'm about to find out. Okay, so I'm clicked on it. I'm gonna make it. Yes, you can. All right, cool. I can rebind the keys. That's very important. <laughs> if it's a PC port and it doesn't have rebindable keys, that's kind of an issue. All right, let's see. Bring up. It looks like there are some. I wonder. Okay, let's try this again. It looks like there are a few keys you cannot rebind, so not all of them are going to be rebindable. It does have control groups, which is very good. Um, obviously, on console, you weren't able to create control groups. And that was mostly, you know, just down to the console controller doesn't have that many buttons. This is not going to work. So, all right. Most of these are rebindable. That's pretty good. Um, disappointed not all of them are rebindable, but that's okay. Definitely a good list of controls. Obviously, audio. This is about what I expect, you know, individual volume controls, which is good. A lot of games just cheap out and go with master volume, you know, so whatever. No one really cares about that. Subtitles for cinematics and in-game dialogue. Very nice. Um, a lot of games don't let you choose between the two, so that's interesting to see. All right, so we've got full screen, full screen windowed mode, resolution. What are the resolutions for? It goes down to 1024 by 768. And obviously my max resolution is 1440, which is fine. All right, vertical sync. I would probably turn, I'm going to turn that off because I use G-Sync. Um, for those of you who don't know, if you have a G-Sync monitor, it kind of messes with your, it kind of messes with it, like G-Sync and Vertical Sync kind of clash with each other. Alright, so anti-aliasing, kind of annoying that it doesn't tell you how, what kind of aliasing it uses, but not too, not too unreasonable. We'll go ahead and max it out to 8. I don't think this game is going to make my, uh, Make my system go crazy. All right, high quality particles. A little bit bare bones on the graphics options. Not too surprising considering it was a console port. Let's see, high quality particles. Yeah, let's go ahead and turn that on. All right, game. Zoom minimap. Enable a closer view. I don't know why those are under controls. Unique paint jobs. Uh, paint jobs were. I think one of them was a pre order bonus. And essentially, uh, it would make certain vehicles have different colors like the warthog had like fireball you know it had a flame paint on the front of it friend or foe team colors instead of individual player okay that's fine toggles the ai advisor for skirmish games cool cool all right i probably would never use these options but that's okay all right let's go back now you have campaign skirmish 
tutorial, multiplayer, the time and the timeline. The timeline you unlock as you complete missions, and it gives you a little bit of the backstory. I think you actually have to complete missions in a certain way in order to get that. It's been a while since I've played, and uh, there's it's just little short little lore blurbs about the Halo timeline. I wonder if all of them are unlocked. It doesn't look like it. No, that's probably unlocked once you do more missions. And it just it tells you some of it's about the Spartan programs. Uh, some of it's about you know the history of the first contact with the Covenant. For those of you, you know what, I'm not even going to explain the Halo story because I, I would hope everybody knows it by now. But essentially, the Covenant are a, a, a race, a group of alien races who are basically trying to wipe out humanity because they think we're an affront to the gods. Now, Skirmish is just against AI, obviously. Multiplayer. Let's see. Search games. Okay. Game type. You've got Skirmish, Campaign, Players, Any. Mode. Okay, here's the mode. Standard, Deathmatch, Keep Away. That's Grab the Flag, Tug of War, Reinforcement. Yeah. So it has a decent amount of multiplayer options. I typically just played Deathmatch back in the day. Now, the thing about Halo Wars is even with the different factions, and there are only two factions, the Covenant and the UNSC, you have different hero units. Like, uh, For example, Captain Cutter is the basic unit, the basic guy, hero of UNSC. And every hero has special abilities. Now, the difference between the UNSC and... Okay, I don't really care. Let me, yeah, let me leave the lobby. So the UNSC, their heroes fight from kind of the overhead. They have abilities that they can help the troops or they can construct special units. Cutter can call down uh, cannon fire from the Spirit of Fire, which is the ship that he commands, or he his ultimate ability is to drop ODSTs, who are basically supermarines. Uh, let's see. Anders can construct a more powerful flying unit that uses a laser cannon instead of a machine gun, and Forge, who is the third human leader, can use I think an upgraded tank. I think it's a upgraded Scorpion tank that has two main guns instead of one, which makes it a lot more powerful. Now the Covenant, they have three they have three leaders as well. The Prophet of Truth, I believe it's the Prophet of Truth, it might be the Prophet of Regret. Uh, the Arbiter, not the same Arbiter from Halo 2, but an Arbiter, and a Brute Chieftain. Now, the interesting thing about them is those hero, those units fight on the map with your units. Uh, the Prophet can shoot lasers from his hover chair. He can call down fire from the sky. The Arbiter can absolutely decimate other armies. Uh, he can kind of go into this rage mode, and it's almost like a little third-person action mode, and you just watch him leap across the map and just cut people down. The Brute has something similar, and I believe they all have a different type of unit. But uh, that's enough about kind of the overview of the game. We're going to play just a quick campaign mission. I'm going to try to be quiet during the opening, just so you can hear the dialogue. I've got the music turned down, but we'll see how this goes. Captain's Report, February 4th, 2531. Five years. Five long years. That's how long it took us to get Harvest back. Go, go, go! First it was going well, then setback after setback. Loss after loss. Made what was going to be a quick and decisive win. Into five years of hell. Of course, that's all Harvest is today. It's hell down there. But now it's ours again.
Serena, status. Standard orbit achieved. All systems normal. Prep for pod launches, bring weapon systems online. Expecting trouble, Captain? Harvest may be ours again, but I don't think the Covenant appreciate that yet. Sergeant Forge, report. Definitely plenty of bad guys down here, Captain. And they found something in the ice. Damn it. That complicates our mission. Anders, what have you got? Captain, scans of the northern polar regions show some interesting Covenant activity on the surface. There's some kind of structure down there. What do you think they're looking for? That's what we're here to find out. We're to bring Alpha Base up to operational status and take control of that site. I'll get my equipment ready, Captain. Lady, there's no way you're coming down here on the first bird. Sergeant Forge, pull back to Alpha Base. I'm sending you some backup. Roger that. Forge out. So, nothing too difficult then? It might be the key to this whole war, Serena. It's worth the risk. Captain, Alpha is toast. Nothing for me to pull back to. Suggest you hold that back up for now. We need to turn that around, Sergeant. Serena, what's our status? Sir, we've got a lot of troops retreating from Alpha Base. If Sergeant Forge can regroup them, our numbers may be sufficient to retake the base. Roger that. We'll round up any and all survivors and get Alpha back. All right, now we've got the first mission here. I'm gonna play with the mouse and keyboard only because I just want to see how good the uh, controls are. All right, is it right click to attack? It is. Okay, good. They adopted the standard RTS fighting style. As you can see, the graphics are pretty good. Um, obviously, this is a remastered 360 game. The cutscenes were always well done. Um, for those of you who don't know, I think they were done by Blur who also did a lot of the cutscenes for Halo 5. So the cutscene quality definitely didn't suffer in this game. In fact, this game has arguably one of the best cutscenes in the Halo series, if, if you want to be technical. Alright. Local units. Okay, local units. Uh, that takes me back. Alright, let's get, let's get her done. F9, I don't really care about objectives. You can see Forge has a little bit different of a uh, Warthog than the standard one. The standard one uses a machine gun, and you can upgrade the units. Warthogs start out with machine gun, and then they get the Gauss Cannon. I think they can also have flamethrowers, but it's been a long time since I remember how to do that. And obviously this is just the first mission. You can see Forge doesn't take too much damage. He's kind of a beast. And you can see this is an objective, you know, Moving kill on. X Let's amount go. of grunts, save X amount of All marines, you know. The different objectives Let's allow go. you to unlock things, Tango, especially in the timeline. Yeah, I got it. Calm down, buddy. We got this. Dang, bees. Here we go. Might as well just call this mission Warthog Roundup. Come on, guys. Let's do the Lord's work here. Local units. Let's kill these filthy aliens. On the move. Let's roll. I'm going. Let's I mean, roll. it's not StarCraft by Rolling. any means. Or, you know, StarCraft levels of uh, complex. You know, it's mostly just attack. But you can get Rolling some out. really crazy strategies later on. Rolling. Especially Rolling. if you play multiplayer and you use Anders. She has a bomb that freezes all units. But the trick is, if you use it on... I guess I should probably try to run you guys over. Nah, we'll be alright. The Warthogs have a special ability called Ram, but I don't really see a reason to use it. My guys are doing okay. Uh, but yeah, Anders uh, Frost Bomb actually will kill all air units because they essentially are frozen in the sky and they fall from the sky and die. So if you're up against an opponent who uses primarily air power, it's really fun to wait for them Let's to throw go. their entire air force at you and then just annihilate it with a single attack. I'm now, going. most people are would Let's be smart go. enough to get away from that, but not necessarily everybody. Okay, I think Let's I'm go. getting close. I'm trying to remember. There we go. I know, guys. It's okay. I love the Warthogs. They jump like maniacs. They're just like, woo! Don't worry. Cavalry here. Follow us, Dukes of Hazard insanity. 
Now, unfortunately, there isn't any kind of formation move with your troops. Um, they move as fast as the slowest unit. Now, your warthogs are kind of stupid and will tend to try to run ahead. Just because, you know, they're dumb. <laughs> the, the friendly AI is okay. It's, it's not super bad. It's not super great. Oh, yeah, I gotta get the uh, Marines. There are gonna be certain points in the... Local units. Uh, okay. Okay, good. It's letting me. Target the power source. I'm working on it, buddy. He's always yelling at me. The Marines have a special ability where they can just throw grenades. I was working on it until you told me I couldn't do it. Nice job, guys. All right, let's send the Warthogs in first. Unfortunately, you can't zoom in and out as much as I would like. Um, it's, you know, this is the, the default view, and you can't really zoom out of that. But it, it provides a decent enough perspective. And as you can see, the graphics are pretty good. What the heck? Wow, okay. I really hope that doesn't... Uh, I apologize for that weird... That weird email message. Maybe I'll cut that out or try to blur it. Your support in route, Sergeant. They'll take out Maybe I'll put a title card right there. Yours. Blur it out. Stupid change notifications. Ooh, those are tanks. We need to take that out. There we go. Good job, guys. Send them to hell, boys. As you can see, there's not much strategy in this first mission. Later on, we'll get to build our base. I can't remember if we get to do that on this mission or... Ooh, away from that grenade. What are you doing? It's best mostly just to concentrate fire on the enemies. Trying to get fancy with it doesn't always work. Although, you, with more specialized units, it's a lot easier. So it's 91. Should still be a few more bad guys. Right, let's take them. This will be our base. I think they're going to let me build up a little bit. And now, unlike a, most traditional RTS games, your base is essentially in a fixed spot. And... All you can do is... Oh, wow, I didn't get to kill all the hundred guys. Bummer. I, that's okay. I did most of the objectives. Alright, so is it going to go right to the next mission? Alpha base is ours again. Sergeant Forge, you may want to scout the area. Alright, not bad. I should have been a little bit quicker and killed the... Uh, killed the little grunts faster. I think some of them got away. That's why I didn't get the 100. And you're awarded a score. You see, I got silver. I think the max you can get is gold. You have to get, you know, a certain amount of points. So it does have campaign scoring. It does have co-op. Co-op, if I remember right, you you still control your base, but you can give control of units to your other player. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up. Um... It's definitely a pretty fun RTS. It's simple. It's only 20 bucks, but it's got a pretty good story to it. If you're a Halo fan, I definitely re recommend picking it up because it's going to look better on this con on a PC than it is on console, and it's you know only $20, and you didn't have to pay for Halo Wars 2. Um, but that's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. Um, as always, if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this, just hit that subscribe button. And if you got a question or comment, just leave it below. But that's going to do it, guys. Have a good one.